If you're experiencing a noise like this in your vehicle, I'm going to share with you in this video what that noise was caused by, how you're easily able to diagnose it, and what the actual purpose of that part is. Okay, so I decided to make this video for two reasons. The first reason is the amount of misdiagnosing that happens with this type of fault. Usually, um, tensioner and drive belt and vehicle gets sent away and then comes back pretty much immediately or never leaves the workshop and they wonder why it is still having the same problem. Second one is, I did make a video on this previously, but I was more specific to Volkswagen and that one. And this type of problem is not just Volkswagen Audi related it's in many many different vehicles now this type of setup so I decided again I would share knowledge and maybe go into a little bit more detail as to why they're in the vehicle so I'm going to try and make this as short and sweet as possible so I run through this quickly first and foremost fault is the alternator pulley they have an overrunning pulley type setup on them it's not like the older type which is a solid pulley and what that overrunning pulley is, is a one-way clutch. So it turns in one direction and then it free spins in the other direction. So if you're looking at me here when I'm bench testing it for a demonstration, you can see that it's locked in both directions. So as I'm turning it back, it's locked. And then as I'm moving it forward, it's also locked. And that shouldn't be the case. As you can see here with the new alternator, it doesn't do that. It spins nice and free in one direction and then it's solid in the other. Now that puts additional forces on the drive belt, which then causes a tensioner to potentially fail and the drive belt to also become frayed depending on how long it's been doing it. So the question that a lot of people have is why are these in a vehicle in the first place? What's the benefit to have a one-way clutch? in an alternator compared to your completely solid type that was in previously. There are a few benefits, then I'll go and give kind of an example of what I think is a good way to uh, sum it all up. But the benefits are dampening of the belt oscillation. So it reduces force in the drive belt, therefore you have a smoother engine, less force on the drive belt. What's less force in a drive belt gonna do? Well, the drive belt's gonna last longer. For starters, you're gonna have a drive belt that doesn't endure as much strain as what the older type would. And we are seeing that drive belts are certainly lasting longer in these vehicles than other type. Um, improved noise, so you might have a smoother idle and uh, a smoother engine overall as you are getting them um so if you're driving along accelerating heavily and then decelerating suddenly it allows the alternator to freewheel in uh, in that instance so it reduces the force level in the drive belt as that's happening now in a kind of comparison uh, it works in a similar way to when you might be freewheeling on your bike so if you're riding your bike you're going up the hill you're using that force the pedals are engaged you get to the top of the hill and then you're going down and it's freewheeling. So you have your pedals in a nice stationary position and then you're coasting all the way along. That's kind of the way um, I read these alternator pulleys. You're using the forces in one direction and then they can freewheel in the other direction. And that is pretty much it for this video guys a nice short and sweet one if you have that type of noise present in your workshop or you have it on your own vehicle just listen to it gather that information that is a common noise that you will hear that roughness that additional force that tensioner hopping up and down is a common telltale sign that you have an overrunning pulley alternator setup a very quick way to do that is talk to your parts department 
uh, talk to a supplier and check if your vehicle has that type of one in it. If it has, you have the potential to get the pulley on its own. You might need a kit to actually do the replacement on it. Either way, you have options and now you know that there's one in the vehicle that needs to be checked. Do that simple check and you won't go wrong. And that's it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.